Hello, friends and followers. Well, here's the um, national company HRO 500 I've been working on. So it's a complicated radio. It has an analog synthesizer and that hasn't been working so well. So anyway, how do you approach getting this radio to lock? So here's what I did. I first of all, the lock LED doesn't work. So I tacked on a uh, LED down here and that is running through a 150 ohm resistor. You can see that it's tacked in right there. So that's this green wire right there and 150 ohm resistor grounded. That will suffice to get you kind of going to at least have a visual reference. And then I plan to move that LED to the front of the panel once I get the front panel off. Anyway, that proves that works. So that LED is flashing according to the, the sawtooth generator that scans the high frequency oscillator. Anyway, who cares about that? So the bugaboo for me now has been this part of the synthesizer actually creates that complex waveform, the pulsed harmonic waveform that I think is involved in synchronizing the high frequency oscillator. But the concern I had is this part of the synthesizer has three IF cans at 4.75. So what it does is it takes the 4.75 IF and as the sawtooth wave is changing the HF oscillator, it's going to create a 4.75 IF as it scans. And as it scans, the diode detector down here will detect that it's locked and the voltage will, I think, lower from the DC amp and then the uh, thing will unmute and it will lock. So that part's not working yet, but what I wanted to do was explore how this part of the radio worked. And this, this is a mixer here. I'm not sure yet why it's a mixer here, but this takes 475 in, 4.75 IF, and from the receiver, which the HF oscillator is uh, creating by scanning. And it mixes something else in there. Maybe it's from this, I'm not sure yet, but because the schematic's all screwed up. But anyway, you'll get 4.75 through these cans. And at the end, it takes the output of this can and it'll put it through a diode, double diode detector to, um, and this is actually a, uh, yeah, the guy has written diodes here. This is actually a mixer here too, because it's mixing in the, the 4.75 megahertz crystal. So right about here, the crystal from the end here is getting mixed. So make sure that crystal is on frequency on 4.75. You can set the trimmer back in here for that crystal. And once that's done, here's what I'm doing. So I'm forcing a 4.75 signal into this thing. And it's kind of like, okay, I don't care what the HF oscillator is doing. I'm just going to force in a 4.75 megahertz signal and see if this thing will lock. That's, or, or at least pretend to lock. So I'm just shoving the signal in here where the 4.75 goes. And sure enough, what I did was I adjusted all these cans for the best lock signal. So I have the scope on these two resistors which are tied together and those are basically after the diodes where it goes into the DC amp. So let me show you in schematic where that stuff is. But this is pretty cool. So at least it verifies all this stuff works. So that is where, that's right, that's right here. So I'm looking here, I have the scope right there. The scope is right there with these two resistors and it, that's right before it goes into the DC amp. Anyway, if you if you get this close to ground, this thing will turn off the sawtooth generator if it's working and 
you'll unmute the radio. So that's about where I'm at now. I'm, monitor I'm monitoring this right here with a scope. So when I add my own 4.75 frequency, which simulates the IF, it simulates the HF oscillator uh, finding 4.75 and making it work, I will null. And so here, that is basically the 4.75 crystal. It's this crystal back here on the, uh, on the uh, I call this like a comparator board, basically. So it's using that for comparison. And now here's the fun part. So I can go to my generator here and go to amplitude and now start increasing the amplitude. I'm on 4.75 megahertz right there you see that frequency 4.75 so now if I increase the amplitude here you'll see the radio will unmute immediately so watch this volume up and it'll unmute if you watch the sine wave here that's the original crystal when I add that it puts out a funky monkey wave and if you go back here and look at the mute or the sync, the sync light, I pretty much go in sync. So that's sync. I'm not sure why it's pulsing, but that's basically synced. What if I change the frequency here a bit? So the frequency could be off a bit, but that basically works. I guess it's right on, huh? 4.75. 4.75. Well, it's right on the money. Amplitude. There, a little more amplitude and it works. So now we're basically a pretend lock. So it shows that these cans are amplifying and filtering and these diodes are detecting. The DC amp is working, it's unmuting the radio and the comparator is working. So if there's a valid 4.75 signal, this thing will lock. So that means that once this is done, and, and working as it is, I can focus on other parts of the radio that are probably broken also. But what I found was these cans were a bit out and I tried a bunch of different ways of aligning them. And what I found really works is you simply watch the scope and you tune it for the dirtiest wave there is, the, the most interference wave. And I'll show you how that works. So I'm inputting in here above before this can where the symbol comes in, the 4.75 from the uh, IF strip on the radio itself, and if I put a, put the tweaker in here, tweak this first can, watch what happens. See it goes out. So you want to get these things right. So I can't see any wave change, but you can tell by the audio tweaking out that we're that that can is right. Let's go this can here. So those are good. Third can. So I'm not really changing the waveform at all, am I? Just tweaking it for for the mute. So that's, that's it. That's how to adjust this thing, I think, anyway. I'm still not unlocked, but that might be getting us closer. So now that that's supposedly working, how can I verify it? I'll take the generator off here that I have. I'll turn it down. I'll remove it. Then this thing 
and now I'm stuck with the original wave. So you would think this thing would be scanning and trying to find the optimal. And so that means that this has to be correct. This has to be adjusted correctly here. There's really no adjustments in this thing at all, just the frequency and the band. So I can't seem to cause any changes with that. So what does that mean? Does it mean the, the HF oscillator is not working? I, I, I believe this is tuned correctly now. So what does this mean? Can I change the band? It makes any difference? No. So if we look at the 4.75, coming right into the uh, radio, or into the uh, VFO board, the VFO, the synthesizer board. Let's look at that. And I'm gonna put the scope right where I was injecting signal. Damn it. Oh, man. This is one reason why I didn't like working on radios. It's just too messy, too many wires and pieces and parts. And uh, parts go all over the place. The room's a mess. When I was a technician in college, fixing radios for my buddy Edward, he had a better shop than I have an office. All right, so I was on this capacitor here, so I'm going to go back in here and connect to there, right about to there. And you can see kind of a puny wave coming in. And this one will be akin to the synthesizer frequency, as I recall, so that is coming in, and if I turn the synthesizer, that wave will change, you don't see that, it will change in frequency as I change the synthesizer, and the little synthesizer cap goes up and down, so that's changing, I think that's the HF oscillator there, changing frequency because you want to get that thing close to where it should be. So, this transistor here mixes it with what? I'm not sure about that yet. So that's the part now I gotta figure out, but I believe the rest of this is working. Um, I should be able to get this thing to fire up now, I would think. If I go back here, and there's the comparative wave. That's the 4.75 from the crystal. So, I'm trying to think of why this wouldn't work now. If I change the band, there's no change at all. Yeah, it's almost like it's just not getting any IF into it. And I know this, let's see. So the radio now is scanning, I'm sure. Yeah, it's way out of lock now, I think. Let's see if it really is. Whoops, what happened? I lost power. Put the power back on. Jeez. All right, power's on. And that's good and bright. If I turn my synthesizer, I don't think that will change at all. So yeah, I'm still whacked out. So I don't have any comparative signal. I was injecting a signal from this generator and faking it out. But now I need to get that real signal and the HF oscillator is what provides that. So now if we look at the uh, spectrum here, let's see, what band are we on? We're on the four to 10 band. So yeah, so somewhere along here, let's make sure we're connected with a uh, antenna to my shop monitor here, which is a RTOSDR. 
Okay, that's connected still to there, so that should give us some RF. So, wiggle the band switch a bit. Nothing. So also what matters is when you take this switch all the way counterclockwise, that's the lowest frequency there is. That's the one band, and then if I rotate it, it should give me a two band. When you do that, you should see some spikes coming up on here. So that's incredibly not working now anymore. None of that's working. Not sure why. But this part of it then is dead again. Not sure why that died. This thing should be making some pulses. All right, well, I gotta study the uh, diagram some more. That's as far as I'm gonna get today on the radio. It's complicated. I guess once you know it, it's not so bad. This doesn't seem so complicated now. Mixer, amplifier, amplifier, comparator. That doesn't seem too bad and that seems to work. Tuning the cans up seems reasonable. Now I just gotta get the 4.75 to appear here. Maybe it's just a matter of synchronizing it too. I don't know. I'm still not sure how it decides what to lock onto. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.